Hello? <laughs> Hi! Excuse the dogs. They're really noisy today. So, um, I wrote everything down on my notes. So, the whole month of June? What did I do in June? I think I was just focusing on school, honestly. I know it sounds kind of boring, but a boring life means a peaceful life. I don't mind. I kind of like it that way. <laughs> Oh, I've actually been playing a lot of games recently. Wait, I should show you. I've been playing this game called Sumiko Farm. Sumiko Farm. It looks like this. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah. Isn't that so cute? Anyway, you build your own farm and stuff. And I know it sounds kind of boring, but it's fun to me. Anyway, there's this other game called Cooking City. It looks like this. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's fun! I mean, if you play it, then please tell me so we can gush about how delicious the food looks. Another one I've been playing is called Lion Chef. It's from Lion Studio. Oh my goodness, the light. I'm not sure if you can see it properly, but um, it features brown from the Lion Friends, and that's mainly why I started playing it. <laughs> Uh, so that's where all my time has gone um, this past month. Hold on, we need to hydrate ourselves. Okay, but yeah, that's what's been taking up my time recently and I don't mind, you know, it's nice to like not do anything. 
and just like play games and stuff, you know? But the games I play are like games catered to four year olds or like that age group, you know? Well, I mean, that's fine. So, things I've been watching. I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, but I actually watch a lot of zombie movies. <laughs> For some reason, I enjoy them a lot. I like it when a movie makes me scream, but I cannot handle anything paranormal or anything that involves, you know, you know what I mean. I just, I don't even want to say it just because I know it's going to get stuck in my head and I won't be able to sleep tonight. But yeah, zombie movies, I've been enjoying a lot of them with my family. I'm not going to mention all of them because we watched a lot. We have a list and we're checking everything off. Not all the zombie movies we watched were very good, but there are some good ones. So the first one is Kingdom. The other one is Alive. I feel like Alive was the most realistic in my opinion. I don't know, it made use of social media and stuff, so I feel like that's what our generation would do during a zombie apocalypse. I don't know. I feel like Koreans have really mastered zombie art, you know? I don't know if there's like a company, people who can act like zombies because there are a lot of them honestly and i don't think it's very easy doing that you know screaming and acting all the, all the time <laughs> i think cargo was good cargo was a more quiet kind of zombie movie you'd think zombie movies would be super loud all the time but no that one was like really quiet and kind of wholesome and then lastly the one i'd like to mention is black summer we all think that the director did such a good job I don't know, it's interesting. If you haven't watched it yet and you like zombie movies, I suggest that you do. The characters are kind of frustrating, but it's fine. I feel like that added to the overall appeal. Next, um, anime. I actually didn't finish a single anime in June. I know. I read a lot of books, so I guess it's fine, but... Sorry, excuse me. Put that there. And it wasn't like I wasn't watching, it's just that, I don't know, I feel like I'm in an anime rut. Almost everything I'm watching, I'm having trouble finishing for some odd reason. Anyways, I tried watching Balance Unlimited. It reminded me a lot of Vincenzo. Daisuke kinda acts like the main character in that K-drama, but I don't know why I didn't finish it. Maybe I'll finish it in the future, but at the moment, I just don't feel like giving it another shot. It got kind of boring. For me i don't know please don't hate me if you like the show it's really just <laughs> anyway i'm watching another series called seven deadly sins and i watched it a few years ago and i didn't finish it because i was too lazy to wait for every episode every week but yeah i'm watching it again with my brother then i haven't finished yoamushi pedal yet <laughs> i've been having a lot of trouble with boredom lately like i just can't seem to keep my attention but yeah that's all for anime unfortunately oh okay here's he, here let's talk i feel like we should talk about this i'm watching nevertheless the k-drama and my goodness here's the thing okay <laughs> i'm following it at the moment i just i don't know i don't know i'm i'm out of words i'm not out of words because it's so good or whatever. I'm out of words because it's just, it makes me feel certain feelings that I try not to feel. If I feel them, I'm like betraying myself almost because the guy in the show is just not the kind of guy you want your friend to date. It's not the kind of guy you want your daughter to marry or whatever. So I try to like be immune to, you know, but, I feel like everyone who watches K-drama has like a soft spot for Song Kang. You know what I mean? I just... I don't know. He's just... I don't know. Yeah. I know that a lot of stuff I mentioned just now were all Korean, but um, I don't actually finish a lot of K-dramas. I watch a lot of them, like I mean just around episode 10, I start losing interest and I don't finish it. So I feel like it says a lot when a K-drama actually keeps my attention. I don't actually know where I was going with this. Hold on. Ah. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm struggling to like talk about one thing without digressing. Anyway, sweet and sour. 
um, lots of expectations and none of them are met. Like, based on the trailer, you know, if you've seen the trailer, hold on, I'm gonna get a snack. Based on the trailer, I mean, it's kind of obvious what it's about. I don't want to spoil anything. There's a plot twist in that movie that just completely shocked me. I didn't see it coming. I mean, props to the director for like making me think that the movie was what I thought it was. I don't know. If you've watched it, then you know what I mean. Like, what, what just happened? Like, what? Uh, words aren't here for me today. Mm. Okay, so yeah, that's it for what I've been watching. As for the stuff I'm reading, um, what's this called? Um, the Night Circus by Arian Morgenstern. This has been on my must-read list for the longest time because it's one of the books that was listed as the most similar to Caraval by Stephanie Garber and that book is one of my favorite books ever. That's why I kind of delayed reading this for so long. I was hoping that it would give me the same kind of feelings that Caraval gave me. They're both set in the circus. That's kind of mysterious. There's a game that's not really a game, you know? But this book, I'm pointing at it. You know what? I'm just gonna like display this over here. This book was so confusing to me, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be confusing or I'm just dumb. <laughs> but I know based on all the reviews and all the comments that I'm not the only person who thinks that this book is confusing, but I liked it. I gave it a five. Did I give it a five? Maybe a four? Anyway, I liked it, but I just didn't like it the way that I expected to. It made me feel so shy. With that alone makes me very confused. Like it, the book feels like it's flirting with you. I wouldn't consider it a romance. If you read like the synopsis at the back, it might seem that way, but it doesn't focus on that. I read this with my best friend and we kind of narrowed it down to historical fiction and magical realism. I do think that the book itself, just the way it was written, the way it was constructed, the writing style, the writing style is so romantic, charming, enchanting. I don't know. I feel like the best part of the book is definitely, I think, the message because it really is about um, believing in magic. I don't know how to describe it. It's really hard to explain. If this book could be personified, it would be Tom Hiddleston or Emily Blunt. <laughs> because there's this aura, you know what I mean? I like it, but I can't really explain why I like it. I recommend if you are a dreamer type of person, but if you're more of a realist, then you might not like this. I'm sorry if I didn't really give it justice. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I read Serpent and Dove by... I forgot the author's name. I put the author's name over here, but I read Serpent and Dove. I don't know how to feel about this book. It's one of those books that I don't want to admit liking because this book just doesn't have the qualities I consider in a five-star book. Um, first of all, the magic system is non-existent. The plot is all over the place. The romance is just... I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's healthy. I don't know. It kind of... It reads like a fan fiction. There's really no other way for me to describe it. it. I remember reading it at three in the morning and thinking, what am I doing with my life? But I enjoyed it. I was there, you know? I was in the back seat of the car and I was listening to the conversation. I was in it. <laughs> So I don't know, I gave it a three. Here's the thing, I know that this is supposed to be a YA fantasy romance. It's like 95% romance and 5% fantasy. It's like a hate to love romance trying really hard to be set in this fantasy world with witches and witch hunters. Reminds me of Nina and Matthias from Six of Crows, but it's written by someone who's just a really big fan of Sarah J. Mass. So basically a Nina and Matthias fan fiction.
it's ridiculous. But if you want to read something kind of trashy, it's a guilty pleasure read. You don't have to tell anyone you read it. You don't have to tell anyone you liked it. You don't even have to convince yourself that you've actually read it. It's just one of those things. <laughs> I love the main character though, and I love her friends. The friendships in here were great, in my opinion. Just the romance was just, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, yeah. I feel like that's it. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Get my case. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Oof.